evening, everyone. And welcome to the Heritage Month Cook Along with legendary culinary legend, Marion Hart. My name is Dr. Sharon Johnson from the Division of Culture, Prime Minister's Office, Barbados. Heritage Month is celebrated each year in June to commemorate the inscription of Historic Bridgetown and its garrison as a UNESCO World Heritage Property. Actually, it's our first. And at the same time, it promotes the preservation of Barbados's cultural heritage. Last year, we delved into the intricacies of Barbadian soup, and it was quite a delightful experience. This year, we're tackling a Bajan culinary dish that was part of the staple of the working class households of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And we thought, who best to teach us how to prepare this lovely dish, but the equally lovely Marion Hart. Mrs. Hart is who one would call a pioneer and an innovator. She has a long and established career in the culinary arts, having taught in schools, community centers, and at the Paul Marine Institute. She's given off her talents and skills at the Barbados Agricultural Development Corporation, BADC, BADC, and later BADMC for some 26 years, where she's credited for introducing sweet potato, breadfruit, and cassava flowers, which we now have on our, our supermarket shelves. For her contribution to the development of the culinary arts, she has received numerous awards and amongst them i'll just name a few the prime minister's award the edith maxwell award member of the british empire 2008 she's recipient of the barbados jubilee award she was also recognized by the national culture foundation for 20 years of unbroken service as a chief judge in the national independence festival of creative arts being nifka so you see, she's long established career. She's no stranger to TV. She is what we can say was the first TV cooking star. Hosting Meridian 60 on CBC TV. I remember seeing Marion cooking breadfruit hats many, many, many years ago. Before I hand over to Marion, I would like to recognize the fact that we have joining us many persons from Barbados and, in fact, from the diaspora. And over the course of the next two hours, we will invite them to cook along with us and to join in the discussion as we talk about the history of the dish that she's going to be cooking, two dishes, in fact. As we talk about the history, how these dishes are made, and talk about the cultural references, your experiences, my experiences, we're going to share, we're going to learn, we're going to have some fun. And as usual, I'm going to have my fork and my spoon ready for tasting because, Mary, I'm sorry I didn't get around to cooking anything, but I'm going to be tasting. And I expect my second in command, Jocelyn, she, she's the trusted chef, she's going to be cooking. We would expect you to join in and ask questions. As I said, share your memories because in Doing the, the research for this, I found out many people didn't know what soft biscuits were or fried biscuits. And they said, you mean stuffing? They knew about stuffing. But then when I said Eclipse biscuits, many people then remember, oh yes, I remember my grandmother talking about Eclipse biscuits. And for this, we must also thank Wibisco because Wibisco, they came on board and, and as soon as Jasmine reached out to them, they said, yes, we will help. With this, we're going to sponsor this activity. So we are part of the sponsorship for this event. So this is a learning exercise, and this is what we do within the Division of Culture. We share knowledge. It's part of our transferring our cultural heritage knowledge onto younger generations and keeping history and heritage alive. So let's get back to Marion. We start Marion, a mother, a grandmother, a grandmother to all of us. Marion, it is indeed an absolute pleasure having you with us this evening. 
and you're quite a delight to speak to, to reminisce with. We had a little chat this evening as so many things um, came to the fore. You are such a treasure of knowledge. We will have some of our historians joining with us during the course of the evening who will be able to even expand further upon the, the, the historical elements related to this dish. You're a historian in your own right. Your friend Morris Greenwich is going to be joining us uh, during the course of the evening. So having said that, I am going to turn over to the lady of the hour um, and welcome her, uh, Marion Hart. It's Marion Hart. Welcome to the Beijing Cook Along. I'm honored again to be in the limelight to cook with my fellow Barbadians. And I hope that we go back into history and try to enjoy the things that maybe we don't know about some of us and some who know that we have not forgotten our history, we have not forgotten our cuisine, and I'm glad to be here at, mm, as Sharon's here, grandmother, to share my knowledge with you all. So thank you, and everyone that is coming on board, I am glad to listen and learn because we are still in the learning process. Let me welcome Mr. Morris Greenwich, my friend. We have done programs together, and we, we know each other, so Morris, welcome on the program. Thank you. So this evening, um, I was requested by the ministry to prepare something called Cook Biscuits. Now, their names attached to this, Cook Biscuit, Top Biscuit. Same thing. And I was also challenged to do fried biscuits, which is very simple. But I want to let um, people know that these foods were here and they were staples and they're part of the bread kind that we all talk about potato and yam and breadfruit and green bananas and edos and what have you. But when those things were not available and money could not afford or the weather was bad or they were not in season, the, our parents and grandparents turned to salt biscuits, cooked biscuits. But one thing they always do, they made sure that it had a little protein in it. And I remember my father, who is, I am carrying on his legacy and his love, he taught me how to use cooked biscuits using snow. And that legacy lives on today. So I went out snow to stay with us and I got some snow and here's the snow you don't need a lot and as you will know that looking at the recipe you'll know that I never said anything to do with salt because biscuits have a certain amount of salt and we have some butter here that we would all be use for flavor we also have some chop Echelot, thyme and sweet margarine. As we say, a bunch of Belgian seasonings we always get. There's the term. And this is what I'm going to be using. And of course, we have the biscuits and thereby biscuits that we all use. Now before the use of some biscuits called sunrise biscuits that came from over the way we use Jamaica or something, but now we produce our own biscuits. So we are I would say self-sufficient in biscuits and other things that, you know, as we go on this afternoon, we will reminisce and talk about. So I'm going to get started. I have my biscuits and I'm going to use two packs of biscuits. I'm going to follow my recipe to tea. Now, four packs of biscuits will serve a family of four. So if, you're, if you have a family of six, you know that you have to add another pack of biscuits. If you have eight or you have a whole, the whole, family, this is the extended family, then you know how much biscuits you will have to use. But this is something that everybody likes. So I'm going to get my biscuits, two packs of my biscuits, and I'm going to have my biscuits here. Yeah, you see the biscuits here. And for these two packs of biscuits, these are basically about eight ounces. Yeah, they're basically about eight ounces. 
and I'm going to use two cups of water for wetting the biscuits. Now they are very absorbent, so you have to put the biscuits in water and you have to break them down in the water as your first to soak them. You don't want them too wet because you'll still have to squeeze them out and the biscuits will absorb the water. Okay. So while the biscuits are soaking me two cups of water, I am going to turn to my pot and I'm going to saute my protein which is snout. I'm going to turn to my herbs which is the echelot, a slice of red hot pepper, some thyme and sweet marjoram. All this would go into the pot to be sauteed. And we're going to use some butter. So I'm going to go over to the stove and then I'm going to start my cooking. Marion, did you put two packets of biscuits in there? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Two packs of biscuits in there. I'm going to get my jets on. Doesn't seem to be enough water, Marion. Pardon me? Seem to be enough water. Just two cups of water? Yes, two cups of water. Because okay. you, you don't want it to um too wet too wet but if you're okay. going to be doing anything else with like stuffing you know you would do accordingly okay right okay I have my cooker going and I set my this is an old what you call a Dutch pot this is many years old and I'm going to have my spoons you bring them a little closer here and I'm going to use a wooden spoon because it is easier and I'm going to put basically one tablespoon of butter you don't need more than that because if you need more than that then it's too greasy and you're going to allow that to melt here in the pot and this is actually cast oil old time Dutch pot or buck pot we call it. This is also another old time buck pot. This was here for Ian's too. This is gas iron and we're going to fry the biscuits in here. So we have here the butter is melted and you don't want the butter to burn because then it will subtract from the taste. So in here I have a garlic, a clove garlic chopped along with the herb these things okay so I'm going to put that in for any further ado a lot of stuff here remember that I would have boiled the snow out and I don't know how many of you will remember snow it used to be very very cheap like 68 cents a pound because in the plant time this is this would have been protein as part of a protein so what I did, this is some of it, I bought some, I boiled it out for about an hour, simmer it and allow the salt to come out. And when you have salted it then, it has a very nice flavor and I must say that I have not lost taste for my flat ribs, my snow, my pigtail, nothing so. I still like everything that I eat pro Janet. Janet was a hurricane, I was seven years, so I am. Um, I still cook the same way, eat the same way. So here I have the um, right. So this is sauteed, and you saute things to bring the flavor out. So after that has reached. You know, you see the, the um, it's still green. And I'm going to get my biscuits over here. These biscuits are soaked. Two cups of water. And always remember, if you follow the recipes right, everything will just come out right. There's two cups of water. You notice that there's absorbed the water. You don't need to drop more. And I'm going to take my biscuits and I'm going to add to, to the, um, 
herbs on his snow. And it's an easy dish to cook, you know. Stir, remember there's some pepper in here. There's some herbs, there's some butter. Did you flavor the snow? You can't want it better than that. Salt biscuits or cooked biscuits. And this is a staple. So Marion, I'm using tuna. Is that gonna be okay? Yes, when you finish your biscuits, if you if you are not a salt meat lover or you don't eat meat at all, you can use any protein to supplement your snow. You can use tuna, you can have a piece of fried fish, you can So should I, put the, should I put the tuna in now? Or afterwards? Should I put the tuna in now that the butter and the herbs are going? Yes, you can add it to the, to the biscuits. Okay. Or you can Thank make, you. you can sort it by itself with some onion oh. rings. Make it more attractive, onion rings, some sweet pepper, some celery. You know, add okay. more value to it. And All right. You could have it in a little pot. And when you put your salt biscuits on the plate, then you'll have that as a little gravy or, you know, a compliment. Okay. But if you're in a hurry to run out, I don't see why you can't throw it in and have a <laughs> one. I have a one pot meal, you know. <laughs> so here it is. And this is a salt biscuit. No, I wouldn't put any more pepper in it because it also already has a sliver of hot pepper. And while I am doing this here, and I just leave it there to simmer for just um I will see a minute now these are the ingredients that go will go into it you have some garlic you have some onion you have hot pepper you have some fun thyme and some parsley and you also have echelot or shows right so I make sure that I get all the things here and I have them prepared for you. I show you the snout just now. So I would not go eat on my snout because I love salt meat. So this is about ready. And I'll turn the stove off, right? And you will know when it's ready because it all holds together like this. Marion, my biscuits are still crunchy. Should I put some more water? No, no, it's not, no more water. Just it's too going. soggy, and then when it's too soggy, children are not going to eat it. Okay. So once it holds together like that, you see that? And you see it smoking? That is salt biscuit. So oh, okay. in order to make it um, attractive, what the old people do is to take a butter pan and press it in the butter pan, right? And put it on the plate and make it look good and then you get a knob of butter on it also so i'm going to use this ladle here right and i'm going to pack it in this ladle as much as i can clean it wrong right and i'm going to plate it here how does that look and if my husband eats a lot you will see him at some time he eats a lot he has a tremendous appetite I might put another one here, right? And that is a good meal. Everything is in there. And I will just take it over to the table. But before doing that, I will decorate it with a little something to make it pretty so that you digest this substance with water and you will want to eat it. Now, if for you, Sharon, or any person else who would want to have know that you can afford a chicken leg here or you can have a piece of shark or a piece of fried fish or some corn deal or whatever you want go right ahead but this is what we know as a perfect dish for a family pro pro Janet for the hurricane because I started to cook before Janet when Janet he was seven years old and I know how to push wood fire and to pick up wood and not do all the things and Something I will say, you will remember, I even know how to use the dry cow dung and thing to, to make fuel. And I know that Mr. Morris, Green Age, and the, all the other historians and people talk about that because I was in that era too. So this is the salt biscuit. It's very simple. It takes about 20 minutes to do to prepare from start to finish. So here's it. And I will take it over to the table at some time. But before I get into that now, I want to start on my other project which is the fried biscuits. Oh 
Marion, that's delicious. Oh my god. It smells good. Oh, oh it tastes amazing. Yeah, yeah, it smells good. Mm. So Very I'm, good. I'm going to get the biscuits. Now these biscuits are dried. I'm going to rest them in here. And I'm going to get some paper. Um, some paper. Long time we, use, we would use a kitchen towel to rest it on. But we've had, you know, we step up. So I'll have this here close to me here. And I'm going to set my pot on again. I'm finished with this salt biscuit. So I'm going to move the set that there. And I'm going to bring my biscuits here. And this but pot, as I tell you, it's eons, and the, the black it gets is the sweet of the food that cooking it taste. Believe it or not. I Okay, so I put my butt pot on, uh, my little butt pot on. I had this for years, I bought that from Trinidad, it's about 40 years old. But it's handy. And into that, I'm going to add some oil, cooking oil. Long time we will call it lard oil, but you know they have different brands of oil now. You don't have to carry balls to the store now to get oil. Because that oil used to be like coconut base. And, um, you know, that's what was affordable at the time. And into that, I'm going to, to flavor it. I'm going to put one clove garlic crush. Right? Oh my God, it's so delicious. Put add flavor. So, so Marilyn, you're, you're, doing, you're on to the next dish now? Yes, I'm on to the fried bacon. Okay, so let's see it. okay so I, I've got, I've got a, a question for you. Shoot it. What what um what started you out your interest in 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 cooking in food preparation? Well, my father was my hero. Yeah. And I followed him everywhere because I was the only girl in the family. I had three other brothers, but you know people say that this is spoiled child and whatever. But my father was very industrious. He was he kept cows and sheep and goat and pigs and everything. So I'm the only person to be with him to go and get like. Um, feed and you know all those things so I grew up very close on my father and I watched him cleaning tripe and the book from the cow and um, the awful belly cutting open the head frying the brain chopping it up making soup cow his soup and all that and those are the things that I honed those skills from a child and they, mm -hmm. they, they are what they, they are the things that made me successful in life because people yes. forget the way that we, that we eat. You can't tell a child no about tripe. You can't tell, oh. tell a child no about, well, men love cow heel now. It's coming back in and you go to, down the islands and you'll get people using cow heel. But here in Barbados, is not a very big thing, you know? No. But they have their value, you know? Those yeah. Those still have the value. Right? So I, I, I yes. Because I know when we were talking about, um, the history of this meal, you know, um, we, we talk about is so deeply rooted, both of them, so deeply rooted in our history. And um, surprisingly, as I said, many people just don't know about, about, about them. But um, historian Mars Greenwich um, referred to it as, um, he said some people would refer to it in the 50s and 60s when they're going to school. They would take to school the, the, the salt biscuits or the fried biscuits that were okay, do now for lunch. But they would take it in a paper bag. Well, Mar and sorry, Mars Greenwich was privileged to get thought biscuit to carry school because we were carry school bakes. Some yeah. Bakes, and we would have to carry the bakes sometimes on the Panama hat. Oh. And the grease we oh. run, you know, for lunch, the grease we run down your temples. And that's what it <laughs> has for lunch. So when it's lunchtime now and you get the two biscuits yes. or break at lunchtime, now you pull the hat. And you pull down your bakes and you eat maybe two or three bakes. But mm. Morris, I know he he would have been ahead of us with um his yeah. parents could afford biscuits. His <laughs> could afford a lot of things that we can afford. Let, let, let's and, not tell him that. And <laughs> he's very educated and I love him for his historic yes. blessings and yes. the things that he still 
that we forget that he brings to us on a daily basis to forget who we are. This is who we are, including you, Mr. Greenish. Yes. So okay. and he said, you know, you know, he, he went on to say, you know, the guys would hide, fellows would hide, and put this food, bring the food to, to um, bring the lunch, the, the biscuits, to, to school in a paper bag, yes. because some of them were referred to as slave food. Yes. And they don't want other fellows to know that they're bringing um, this kind of food um, to school. That's why you're holding the bakes in this Panama house. Uh, 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 yes, yes. And then you brought another element to it too. You said to me that um, there was also a social element that you could, that persons, if they were moving the charter houses, you know, you put the charter house, or you could collapse the charter house on the, on the, on the ferry, and part of, part of the payment, um, you give the guys some biscuits, and some soft biscuits, and, and, and corn, what, what you said it was? Corn deal. Corn deal? Corn deal, not bull joy. Corn, corn deal, yes. Corn deal, C-O-N-D-E-L, yes. yes. corn deal. Now, yes. I'm ready for the biscuit, so you see, I put this garlic yes. in here, and this is yes. the bone, so this, this would add a tremendous amount of flavor. That would flavor the, flavor the oil. oil. Right, so we'll put in two biscuits at a time. Or you could put more, but don't let them over brown because the air, oh. the air will continue to brown them, you know? So right. These because I was wondering if you would sort them first. No. These biscuits okay. are fried dry, and these mm. will accommodate a roast fowl, if you have a potted fowl, if you had a piece of pork. But at that time, it'd be privileged people that could afford to pot pork, because remember, we would get the off of the head and, and the flat mm. pork that we make so to you call the belly pork. So the people mm -hmm. who maybe would be able to buy a piece of like pork or so, they would have the fried biscuits to accompany it. I just would maybe as a decor and a part of okay. it, right? So mm -hmm. they don't stay long. So this is it because as you watch it, it will get more and more brown. And if you like too brown, then it becomes bitter. So you shake the excess oil off like that and you arrange it on the like that. So I'm going to do another four. And if you watch that, you will see how brown it will come on its own. And it's very, very crispy. It, you know, Beijing said, a boy had a, a biscuit there, so crumpsy. It would be yeah. a crispy for a long time. <laughs> crumpsy. But it would a crumpsy biscuit. Now, if you watch this as the dynamic change, you'll see it become brown. Yes. And you only fret for one minute. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, I would decorate it with uh, a small amount of white pe black pepper. But mm -hmm. that time, you used to get the black pepper and pound them in the mortar. And you used to be a little cold yes. and you spread them over the, the biscuits. And have that as a compliment for the roast fowl or the roast duck or the piece of pork or the whatever it is that was special for that day, you will have with fried biscuits. So I'm going to arrange. Biscuits here. That's a real Beijing word. You will wash them as you will get brown. Yes, Angie. That that's Angela from the U.S. This is what I will do. I will just get some black pepper. This coarse black pepper, and I will just sprinkle it on. Very right, and that's all it will take. Now, what you will do is if you had a large piece of meat. You would arrange the meat on a platter. Unfortunately, I didn't go into too much cooking because I know that there's nobody here to really dine with me. And um, you'll have a nice platter with the meat or the piece of fish, fried fish, more fried fish because bacon fish is not a very good thing, but it becomes too dry and all that. So I don't encourage you to bake fish. a piece of fish to be made for frying. So you'll have your, your platter with the fish or the piece of roast, or the piece of whatever you want to do, and then you arrange the biscuits around it. You, you get the thing in the middle, like that, and you put your meat right there in the center. And when you slice your, your meat, you will put the meat on the plate, you know, they like serving now, and then you will have two or three biscuits along with the roast or fish or whatever. And it remains crisp for a long time. Watch this here, look. So quick yeah. it is, and it happens. Um, Marion, can I just ask a quick question? 
Do I leave the the garlic in the oil while I'm frying the biscuits? Yes, it does not oh, right. it. You put, okay. it in, you put it in green, you put it in um, fresh, and it would yeah. fray along with the, you let it get a little brown and it will fray along with it. It would not, even if it gets dark, it would not spoil the flavor of the biscuits. And I'm sorry that so, somebody in here, the tasty biscuits, to see that that oil and the little white pepper would, would add to the flavor of the biscuits. Well, you've got a camera crew there um, with you. Yeah. Yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark will taste. He can uh, taste it. My stock biscuits taste amazing. I just cannot it stop. That, jazz, that is what, jazz, that is what you say. No, it is, honestly. I've sent you a photo. I've sent you a photo. You well, so Mark, Mark, Mark is there to taste. Yeah. Mark, 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 is, Mark has suddenly appeared. <laughs> Mark is the twister. I'm so happy if somebody helps me to tell that, to convey the taste of the, the, the salt biscuit or the fried biscuit. I will have some myself, but I Mark, you're the official taster. So, in keeping with what the Ministry of Health said, I gotta wash my hands first. But mm -hmm. give me two seconds. Yes, okay, wash. you you get in there, Mark. So, Marion, was there a specific day in the week that you would serve the salt biscuit? What's happened, the salt biscuits came in, they were, in the days they will have what you call bread coin. Sure, you could have bread coin. Bread coin was what I mentioned, cassava and so on. But they yeah. were seasonal. Yeah. Time. Go right ahead and you tell her what's your taste. Right seasonal. You know what it is. So, when I eat, you swallow. So yes. <laughs> in those days, sometimes people would use fire her. Mm. Yes. When it is mm. wet outside, you could not light the fire hearth unless you had a covering over. And many people didn't have that advantage of having a cover. So you would send your child to the shop and you would get like three cents and break up biscuits. So we call it break up biscuits. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or the, the shopkeeper, you know, you, they, they used to be very, <laughs> very good. And they know the families. And they would put the sack biscuits in your lap. Or if you're a child, you will say, hold your shirt. Hold your shirt. And they will give you a good amount of salt biscuits for the three cents. So you'll take that back home to your parents, and that is what you will have in the case that there is no bread, there is no cassava, there is no sweet potato, there is no yam, the edos. And what we call uh, a starbo fryder, or turn down pot. You ever hear what them days? When you had turn down pot? Turn down, pot What's that? turn down pot when they only had sweet potato. So it was two the oh. potato and turn it down a dung basket. And every okay. child would go around the, the dung basket and take a hot potato. And if, you, if there's any milk remain out from selling, then you'll have a sweet potato and make you call that turn down pot. I had done that for Nifka and get a lot of recognition for it. Turn down pot. But you know in today's language, turn down pot means you misbehave. Well, we, in, in our day, you would get um, sweet potatoes, all the, the pickings, because you would mm -hmm. peel up all the big ones up front. Mm -hmm. So this no hard, there's no, your parents go to the, the shop, because we get paid on Friday evenings at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. So they can't go to the store until on Saturdays. Yes, so by the time there, you, you hungry on Friday, the parents come and take all the little pickings, mm -hmm. put in a tree like pot, mm -hmm. and you, you stew them with some salt and turn it down in the, the dung basket. The same basket that carry dung in, you know, yeah. Yeah, they put a a, a, a banana leaf uh -huh. and they'll turn on the sweet potatoes and then every child will come here to put your hot potato and you got if you're lucky you'll get a little piece of salt, fish or red herring. Okay. If no, any no, remain. No, no, no butter on it or on. No, because all that will be finished. Okay. So okay. you call that turn down pot, but you might get some bit that remain from the morning. Okay, okay. That is um post Janet the hurricane. Oh wow. But, you know, things happen, and I realized as a child that after Janet, things begin to look up for the plantocracy, the, the laborers, the people who used to work on the plantation. Mm -hmm. I think it opened their ideas because during Janet, the people who owned the plantation sent out coffee. Mm -hmm. You used to grow coffee in Barbados? No, sent out coffee for the oh. people. People oh. can afford to buy coffee. Mm -hmm. Conflicts is the first time I saw conflicts when in 1955. I didn't know it was. I thought it was biscuit crumbs. 
with conflicts and send milk for you to. Yeah. So then it gave people the idea that there was more to to, to feeding children than just yam and potatoes and snout and neck bone and oh. you know and salt fish. Because what our parents used to do in order to keep things good, mm -hmm. they would have the fowls laying mm -hmm. and they would keep the eggs. They would mm -hmm. eat some too. Mm -hmm. Our we children would go and steal some, you know, mm -hmm. and sell the eggs mm -hmm. in order to buy salt fish. Okay. Or a tin of corned beef. Mm -hmm. So they will sell the eggs to the, the, plantation, the plantation owner right. Right, and take the money to buy uh, more salt fish mm -hmm. or to help out, you know, to subsidize the, 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 the larder, as you'll call it in those days. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that Mr. Morris would, would um, justify mm -hmm. or add to what I'm seeing. Actually, I was I was on the phone with Trevor Marshall. He, unfortunately, he couldn't get in, but he he was telling me about the um, broken up um, biscuits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he was telling about the broken up um, biscuits that you go to the shop and get them. So we're right we're right on point there with, with that with that biscuits. That's a real important historical element there we brought to the table, expanding upon 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 the times. So we were able then to see what time, what what. Times were late. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, Mark, have you had any of the biscuits? Oh my gosh. Yes, they're tasty. I'm, I'm oh. the first time I'm tasting this, and um, I feel quite um, special. I never tasted it before. Oh. Oh. Mark, it's have so the first time I did when I go home. I, I have, a, I have a friend on the line, um, Errol Bolden. Um, Errol is from the U.S., Maryland. But Errol, um, Errol um, wasn't very keen on the on the pork being added. Errol, do you think you will try to stop biscuits with an alternative? Jasmine has used um, tuna. Uh, um, yes. Oh my God. I'm going to try the pork. I will try something um, else. Okay. So when you come to Barbados, you, you, you will be trying that, sir? I'll try about it. Yes, most likely, though. <laughs> I, I will try some. <laughs> Um, in honor of our special guest. Okay. Thank you for joining us, Professor Golden. You're most welcome. Oh, delicious. Well, I can elaborate some more on our biscuits from yes. the Westerny Biscuit Company. We have many things now that we do with biscuits. People use biscuits a lot for stuffing turkey and chicken and you know, because you, you know, you could have stuff in even the part in your meal before even putting it in, 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 into, into, the, into an animal or, or uh, these little birds, these common hens. They have a stuffing that I have seen that made from biscuit crumbs that you put in corn hens and stuff them. But at Christmas and, you know, celebrity times where I just, get biscuits, soak them. I add a lot of herbs to them. I put some fruit with them, maybe pineapple, raisins, something to enhance it. And I bake it and have it on the table as part of my meal. I don't bother with rice and macaroni for it. So biscuits has found its way into the lives of Barbadian. And I think the Rubisco, the place that make the biscuit, they are happy with their output. I never hear any complaints. They hire people, they treat them well. So biscuits are here with us to stay. We have soda bit, you know, they have other biscuits that they have seasoned biscuits, they have biscuits with wheat germ and all kinds of things. But I still like my old biscuit, biscuit, you know? So apart from cooking it, you could use it as a stuffing. You could, people used to take biscuits and soak in the chocolate. We just call it chocolate tea in the morning, but we know it's chocolate, a gritty chocolate, put the cow's milk, and the people who didn't have many good teeth, they would soak the biscuit and eat it with a spoon. And they would go down and work. Yes, Morris know that and work on it until 11 or 12 o'clock. You get the country biscuit and soak in the chocolate. You've got chocolate tea. But it's oh. the chocolate, the grated chocolate, and the cow's milk. So biscuits have been here with us, and they'll be here with us for a long time. And I wish for biscuit all the success in their ever continuing endeavors. I, I have a comment from Paul Murphy from Calgary Development Bank. He said one of my most hated meals as a child growing up 
However, I now have a greater appreciation for my heritage and what this meant to a poor family like mine. Thanks for the education. Thank you, too. Mm. Well, um, I, I mean, I'm not a fan of Eclipse Biscuits, but I am now. Now that I know what I can do with them, it's just, oh, I'm going to be frying my biscuits all the time. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you, Marion, for introducing me to Eclipse Biscuits. Yeah, you just have a little white pepper sprinkle on them. You add a whole <laughs> set of um, flavor to it. Yes, I will. And as it gets older, you see, it would get turn brown, so that's why you don't like fry too much. Just one minute. Okay. You, with yeah. some pe you know pepper pot? Anybody who will pepper pot? Yes. Right. They'll be sitting in pepper pot very well. You know, you always have, well, not us. But you see before, I'm mostly in Guyana, they have pepper all the time where they use with the cats, they from the cassava, that's the way you use the cassava extract and so on. I always have pepper in my fridge because sometimes when I get home and I'm very, very tired and hungry, I will go to the fridge. Because I don't risk to keep it outside and take some pepper pot, reheat it, and I have it with a couple of biscuits. And that be my dinner. So, um, so, so Marion, just one last question. So you said I can either put um, pepper on them, which I've just done, or I could put some sugar, did you say? No. If you like no. sugar, put it. No, there's nothing wrong in, in um, experimenting. I wouldn't put sugar because okay. I, I would just use it as a, um, a, a savory dish, more so than yeah. a sweet dish. But if you like sugar, then go right away and put no, sugar. No, it's perfect for watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's a Netflix dish. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Mar Marion, you did mention pepper pot. And tell me something. I know you've done work throughout the region. And tell me something about that aspect of your life. You've done work throughout the region um, with food production and stuff like that. Tell me something about that. Well, not food production, because food production actually comes from the farmers. I do work on food preparation, like preserving foods and you know, making, so like, for example, taking the cassava, we know cassava flour, but taking it to another stage because since 1948, after the, the Lancaster catastrophe, people didn't eat cassava anymore because they were frightened the, the um, disaster living them. So in 2004, while well, at the Bay DC, I realized that there was a lot more of that could be done with cassava. And the farmers, some of them just, just didn't know what to plant because canes was like going, you know, people would throw the ground as they say and plant cassava and then they couldn't get sell. So I opened up the way so the farmers could bring the cassava to Bay DC, Bay DMC after. And I encouraged them to get machinery, which they did. And we started producing cassava flour and it's a big hit today. I use the, the extract, the sweet cassava extract for vinegar. That took on too. So the sweet potato flour is a secondary flour. You cannot um, use it like how you use a sweet potato, but you can make it into the porridge. You can make it into dumplings. You could um, dust your fish with it, you know, and try and get a, a totally different flavor from using the white flour. So there's so many uses. So BADC, no, BADMC, they have about to 14 products. I also made sweet potato cookies. That's a big hit on the market too. So I've done a lot of work in food processing. I've wrote some articles. I will, would have written a book and you know, I during my meridian days, I had given a lot of recipes that people still use today. And this salt biscuit is one. So when just 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 Jocelyn, Jocelyn, Talk about salt biscuit was run right down my street. But because this is one of the recipes that I would have put in my masterpiece. Yeah. Well, I have to say um, um, that it's actually Senator uh, John King when we were, Sharon and I had a meeting with Senator King and uh, he reminded us of them and uh, that we should do um, salt biscuits and fried biscuits. Right. And I have to say it's just delicious. And so simple and easy, and things you can teach your teach your kids and grandkids, I guess. 
it's well, quick. you have to teach your kids and grandkids that the fast food money don't be as easy as they think. Exactly. As, as we go on from time to time, it's looking blooming now. But there are things that we have to resort back to. And I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know if I'm alive when it's going to happen, but I don't have to go too far because all my children, every dish I can cook, they can cook, and any dish I like, they like. And I would say with bowl assurance that I would count less than five times on my finger that my children would go to a fast food place. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't afford it when they were growing up. Not to say there's nothing wrong with fast food, but mm -hmm. I couldn't afford it. So I would buy the chicken, bring it home, and cook it, and make some salt biscuits one side and hand them that for a dinner, and they appreciate it. So I don't know how we are going to get it, do if we could reverse the trend, but the children now, have, they, they get accustomed to macaroni pie. There's nothing wrong with it, you can afford it, and fried chicken. Yeah, I know the horse is out of the gate now, Marion. We're fast food nation. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, do, we do have a young person here. Um, sorry to put you on the spot, Riyadh. Um, How did you find this evening's exercise? Hi, uh, good evening. Um, I hope that you guys can hear me properly. Um, yeah. This evening was really nice. I know salt biscuits because my granny makes them for me right. pretty regularly. But I did have a fried biscuit, so it was yes. pretty interesting to see and to learn more about the history of the dish and so on. So very enlightening, very fun to be here. So no, you can make, you can make, you can make. Sorry. Yes, no, I know that I can how to make it, and I know that I can put meat with it or fish with it if I want to as well, because I didn't know that protein could be um, put onto the dish either. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. And a lady was asking me if I could put sugar on the biscuits. And I tell her not sugar, but you know, as we speak, I have a guava jelly here. This was done by a guava jelly. As a local okay. guava jelly. Oh, I love Remember it. Remember while you're eating the biscuits that I can take a knife, right? And I can take some of the guava jelly. Just a smear the guava jelly. And I can plaster on the biscuits and enhance the flavor. So the person who asked me about sugar was not too far. But I don't know how sugar would, 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 would stick on it because if you sprinkle the sugar, you go, it would, you know, fall away. But the jam or jelly or marmalade. Thinking about it, it is now, this idea now came to me as the lady talked about sugar. <laughs> so thank you that you could always have it with jam too. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. Mm -hmm. It's so good. <laughs> Let me see him but I've learned something. I've learned okay. something. Uh, 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 never too old to learn. So you can have a jam or some pieces of cheese or something. But yeah, I, cheese I would be good. Um, part pork and potted meat and you know, that sort of thing, but no. Uh, some it, jam, Marion, to try yeah. mine with some jam. Yeah, well, I just found some jam, too. It's a local jam, and it tastes real good. And fried biscuits and jam, fried biscuits and cheese, fried biscuits and tuna, fried biscuits and corn, oh. fried biscuits and bulgari, you know? Just add flavor, add, enhance them by friendly, give a, a lovely color. If you mm. want to eat it, you know, just take it straight from the pack and you sprinkle that oh. little pepper and thing, and it, it's very good. And it's very simple. Oh. It takes just a minute. Well, you just add calories to my waistline. Yeah. Oh, well, delicious. Sugar is a measure of energy, and if you are not diabetic, you have your sugar, please, or not, you'll get too weak. Lydia, Lydia has plans. Lydia's going to try some with some gooseberry jam this evening. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a quick it's a quick meal. Like I've I've got my notes, so I'll try mine this I'll try mine this evening. Marion, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm a big fan of cook alongs. I I first um, did my first cook along during lockdown, and uh, that's where we got the idea for the Heritage uh, Cook Along. Heritage Month really does give us the opportunity to look back 
at our heritage and take the legacy forward. And we're so proud of people like you. Mm -hmm. We weren't all uh, born into middle class families, but there were families who are struggling and families who are struggling today who rush to the fast food, um, whereas they can make it themselves and they can have a very nutritious meal uh, at home. So on behalf of the Division of Culture, um, our Minister uh, Chantal Monroe Knight, and also thank you, Sharon Johnson, Senior Cultural Officer, uh, Senator King. Thank you so much to the crew who are there with you, uh, Mark and his crew, could not have done it without you. And finally, but not least, you yourself, Marion, you are a treasure. And I'm so pleased you've got all those awards very, very well deserved. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us for this Beijing cook-along. We'll see you next June, we hope, when we'll have another Beijing cook-along for Heritage Month. So it's a goodbye from all of us here at the Division of Culture. Bye-bye.